setup going on all right you guys what is going on man welcome back to another king james video now it's been a minute since i've talked about any leica gear on the channel and today i want to do kind of a long-term review of the leica camera that i do own this is the leica m2 right here i want to talk about you know the setup that i have on it the lens some of the accessories that i use for it, and overall just give you guys my thoughts on the camera as well as talk about if it might be worth it to buy a leica film camera moving forward now in 2021. Now this episode is brought to you guys by Squarespace and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about them later on in this episode and how they've positively impacted my photography. But for now you guys, let's jump into, you know, whether or not I think a film Leica in 2021 would be worth it and just a long-term review because there is a lot of change going on in the film industry and you guys might wanna hear and consider that before purchasing one of these things. Now, kind of just to preface this entire video, the last time I made a video about the M2 either was like a review or it might've been the one before that, um, but it kind of talked about, you know, our film like is worth it. And uh, in my opinion, the answer for that in terms of what I said in that video has changed and it's changed just because of what the film industry has kind of evolved to. But let's go ahead and get started with the actual camera itself. So. The camera that I have been shooting now for almost three to four years is the Leica M2. Um, and the M2 was my first choice mainly because the M2 out of all of the M cameras, in my opinion, were some of the cheaper ones. You know, you can pick these up for like a thousand to 1500 bucks on eBay at that time. I'm not sure how much they're going for right now. Uh, but the M2 as well as the M3, both of those cameras, really, really solid. Um, now, a lot of people, of course, when they're going for a film Leica, they're probably looking at like the M6, the most popular Leica because it has a built-in light meter. It's obviously a little bit newer than something like the M2. And, uh, you know, the M6s can get worked on very, very easily. But there's also like the M4P, the Leica MP. And I definitely could have went that route, like the M6 route, but... Um, at that time, you know, everyone was shooting with the M6 and it was just a camera that I felt like, you know, was too populated. I wanted to have a camera that was slightly different, that had its own quirks, that had its own, um, you know, set of features. That's the reason why I ended up going with the Leica M2. Okay, so this is a long-term review. As we mentioned, I'm not gonna go into all of the little details and features of the camera, um, but I'm just going to talk about, you know, the main experience of shooting this thing. Now, as you guys can see, man, the M2 is a beautiful camera. It's made out of mostly all metal. The film advance lever up here, metal. I have a little wooden kind of shutter button on there, but you can go ahead and take that off and reveal just, you know, a, a standard shutter. Uh, something that a lot of people tend to not like about the Leica M2 is this little kind of dial right here, which this is just your frame counter. It's your frame wheel. Um, I think a lot of people are confused about this thing and how it works. Um, one of the main concerns is that you might bump it and move it, but as you guys can see, it, it does take a little bit of pressure to actually get going. Um, and it's actually kind of cool to see it, you know, advance forward. I have some film in here, I'll sacrifice one. It actually will advance forward here as you advance the lever. So it, it's really cool. It's not like a little window like the M3 or the M6. Um, but it is a manual kind of film counter. Uh, this honestly is not a huge issue in my opinion. A lot of people seem to be scared of this camera mainly for that, but in my opinion, there's really nothing to it. I'm not sure why people complain about it. Now, of course, to the left of it, yeah, to the left of the shutter button here, we have our shutter speed dial, and it's a fairly standard shutter speed dial. I would say it's about the size of, let me take this meter off. And there goes the meter. Shutter speed dial is about the size of a dime. I would say maybe a little bit smaller than a penny. Um, and the shutter speeds go from one, or excuse me, from bulb all the way up to one one thousandth of a second. And that's pretty standard amongst all of the Leica cameras. Um, one one thousandth of a second, even on the M6, that's the max shutter speed. It does have flash sync though at around one fiftieth of a second. On the top of the camera, it says M2. You also have your serial number here, and then you have some Leica detailing here on the side as you can see this one is made in germany the m2 was uh one of the uh one of the leicas that were made in germany i think the m4 
maybe the only one that's not, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Of course, you have your self timer lever here as well as your rewind. On the back side, you have your viewfinder inside of here. Um, you also have some ports right here on the top. The back plate, of course, opens up as well as the bottom to load up your film. And of course, we're not gonna open that. I have some film inside of here already. And overall, you guys, for a camera that I've owned now for about four years, it's a very, very durable camera. It, it has to do with that metal build. These cameras really feel like they were built to last. Um, and, uh, you know, the only kind of gripe that I have with the build, at least, when it comes to the M2 is just how easily the back of the uh, back plate right here, how it can get scratched and, you know, there is some paint loss. Some people have like, you know, the black M2s, I have the silver one, and so a lot of the dents and dings that you see on the bottom here aren't too noticeable, but on this back part right here, it would be nice to kind of clean that up, maybe even get it painted. It doesn't bother me, I think, you know, little dings and little scratches add character to any camera, and, uh, for being a camera that is almost a daily driver for me, the M2 has been through hell. It's been through multiple protests, it's been through the rain, it's been in the Philippines. I mean, this camera has really been reliable. This is a workhorse camera. Mechanically, it works very, very great. No complaints about that whatsoever. Now, one thing that I really do love about the M2 personally is the viewfinder. Now the viewfinder in this thing is magnificent, especially if you're shooting with a 35 millimeter lens. Uh, the M2 has one of the best viewfinders in my opinion. I think the 0.82 with the 35 millimeter lens is great because with the 35 millimeter frame lines, you get pretty much the entire viewfinder and uh, it really makes composing very, very easy. Now a lot of people ask me as well, you know, what strap do you use? I think this is a Lance camera strap. I think that's the brand of it. Um, but there are just a ton of rope straps online that you can get. I'm gonna link some in the description below. I personally like olive green. It's like my favorite color. And so, yeah, that's the strap that I use. It's the strap that I've been using now for a long time. The next thing that I wanna talk about, you guys, is the lens selection for the M2 system. You know, kind of in the long-term sense of things, how it has treated me and some of the different lenses that I've used. Um, but before we get into that, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, if you're a photographer and you wanna build some type of online presence, one of the best ways to have your own dedicated space to set yourself apart is to create your own custom website. And in my opinion, one of the best ways to do that is to get started with Squarespace. Now, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to get up and running very, very quickly. You can select a template from the award-winning template section that they have, um, and then you can go ahead and just get started. You can make your own portfolio, you can create your own custom domain, you can have your own shop, uh, but most importantly as well, if you want to have clients contact you directly, they can contact you through there. Head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes or enter promo code kingjapes at checkout, and they're gonna hook you up with 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. So huge thank you to Squarespace Man for sponsoring this episode, but let's jump back into it. Now, in terms of lenses for Leica cameras, I think there's a huge ecosystem that is available at all different price points. So on the lower end, you can spend anywhere from like 150 to $200. Um, then you can go in the mid range, anywhere between 500 to 1,000. Um, and then you can even push it over into like the thousands and thousands of dollar range for lenses. You know, there's different price points for everyone. My pick for the M2, in terms of lenses, the first lens that I would get if you are on a budget is the 35 millimeter color scope bar 2.5 from Voigtlander. That is a beautiful lens. It's the lens that I use to shoot crosswalk with. And uh, it's very sharp, you know, for what it is. And it costs anywhere between $250 used to about 500. Um, there's a lot of gray area in between. And if you can haggle and depending on condition as well, you can get a good deal on that. So that would be the lens that I would get if you are looking to get a Leica M2. Um, later on, I did upgrade to this one right here. This is my current lens that I've been using now for two years. This is the 35 millimeter Summicron version four King of Bokeh made in Canada. Now, uh, just a little backstory on this. They call this lens the King of Bokeh. For some reason, when I shoot this lens around like f4, it has really good looking bokeh compared to it at f2. Maybe I'll make a video about that, but maybe that's why this lens is called the King of Bokeh. I don't know, but I'll be honest with you, most of the times I shoot this between 5.6 and f16. 
5.6 and f8 is kind of the ideal range for me that's where i feel like it has its maximum sharpness i can't speak maximum sharpness um and then you know when you're doing techniques like zone focusing uh the sumicron i'm gonna try to get a close up here has a great hyperfocal scale that you can use uh, to really gauge distance on your subjects and so really good lens in my opinion uh you know if i were to give you guys a piece of advice anybody getting an m2 start with a cheaper lens get something like the color scope bar or even like a jupiter 8 um, and then build up from there because you want to get used to shooting with a rangefinder lens that is a little bit different than shooting with a uh, SLR lens that is. Now, I don't wanna sell the Leica M2 short by saying it's a very simple camera and that it lacks a lot of features that modern day cameras should have. Um, and you know, that's exactly what it is. You know, it's not a modern day camera. The Leica M2 is a camera that was built purely for precision in my opinion. You know, I don't know what Leica was doing at the time. I'm not a huge Leica fanatic. But when I hold this camera, I know that I can set my aperture and sh set my shutter speed um, and not really have to worry about menus or, you know, trying to adjust the mode dial on top of like, you know, electronic SLR film cameras. It's a purely mechanical camera that is going to fire off the shutter every single time you press it and advance that film forward. You have full control of your settings. You have full control of, you know, what the images are going to look like. And it's stripped down to really give you that precision, you know, with focusing, with the rangefinder. Um, and it, it really just is a workhorse. With that said, though, you guys, the M2, unlike the M6, does not have a light meter. And so that forces a lot of us to either meter, you know, manually, which is what most people should do when shooting this camera, or have a backup like this thing. This right here, you guys, is the Kex EM001 light meter. I believe that's the item number on it, but um, it's just a little hot shoe light meter that you can mount on top of the M cameras, and it gives you, you know, some more functionality. You know, you're gonna be able to shoot this camera now like it has a built-in meter on it. It adds a little bit of height to the camera, but in my opinion, it's worth it, you know? A lot of times, I don't usually use the meter. I only use it really when I'm like stumped on exposure, if I'm like, you know, maybe indoors, maybe, you know, but I gotta say, it's very handy for metering, you know, to find midtones. You can take the thing off, you can adjust and do these, you know, <laughs> crazy things and meter offhand and, uh, you know, get your readings and calculate from there. But, you know, with that said, the Leica M2 doesn't really need it. Um, but just know that the M2s, anywhere you go, they're not going to have a built-in meter. And for a lot of people, that could be a deal breaker. In that case, you know, go for something like the M6, maybe even the MP. Uh, but the M2 does not have a built-in meter. And I, I guess that is kind of one of the drawbacks of owning a fully mechanical camera like this. So to kind of wrap up my long-term review on the M2, I think it's a great camera. I think, you know, if you're shooting film and you want that film Leica experience, uh, maybe go for the M6. But if you're looking for something a little bit more stripped down, something a little bit more kind of like, you know, if you were to put it in car terms, like an old school Jaguar, that's the best way I would describe the M2, man. You can feel all the bumps, you can feel, you know, really in tune with the camera and you get full control over it. Uh, if you're looking for an experience like that, definitely try to pick up an M2. It's a great camera. And uh, do I miss, you know, not having a built-in light meter? Not really, man. You have so many options out there nowadays. Uh, you don't really need to have one built in anymore. I want to talk a little bit now about are Leica film cameras worth it in 2021? Now, as you guys know, there have been some huge changes in the film industry. Fuji just, you know, announced that they were starting to take off some of their film stock, stock production, I should say, on a, a, a certain slide film that we might be making a video about here soon. And that leaves, you know, all of the film shooters confused with the direction in which film photography is headed. It seems like every quarter or maybe every year we're starting to see film stocks getting slashed off of the production table and uh, you can probably count nowadays, you know, with your fingers here, how many film stocks we have left to shoot. Um, of course, we got Porsche, we got Fuji Superiors, we got Cinestill, we have Lomography pushing out film, um, but there's no real kind of improvement in my opinion, at least for selection of film stocks, as well as even chemicals. Um, and you know, it's starting to go back on a decline. And so 
With that said, buying a film Leica in 2021 is honestly risky. Um, you're spending anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000 on a camera body, and you're going to be spending more on a lens. And you just never know when film is going to completely die. If you're a diehard film photographer um, and you want to take these Leicas to your grave, then go for it, man. You know, if you want to shoot that, you know, and feel that experience with the Leica cameras, go for it. I'm not saying don't, you know, reach for one of these, but I would think twice, you know, if I didn't own a Leica and I wanted to get into it nowadays, I would probably just, you know, if I'm shooting film, stick with my Nikon F3 or my Canon F1s, my Minolta X700. These cameras are great. But in terms of just where film photography is headed, you know, it's a gray area right now. It's kind of scary. Uh, we don't know how many more years of film photography we have. And so if you are serious about shooting a like a film camera, hop on it, get on it now and enjoy the damn thing, because I'm still going to shoot this. I know the rest of these, you know, people who've been shooting like a film cameras are going to shoot it till film is gone. Um, but, you know, it's an investment you need to think of before you go 100 percent into it. So would I recommend one? Hell yeah, you know, get yourself a Leica like film camera, go and enjoy it, uh, but also weigh out the risks. You know, if you buy this camera now, is it gonna be the only camera you shoot? Uh, you're gonna have other film cameras, is it just gonna sit back in your drawer and not really, you know, get any use? You might wanna think about that and uh, kind of just pay attention to where film photography is going. But with that said, you guys, that is my kind of final verdict on the Leica M2. Those are my thoughts, my long-term review, great camera. Um, it's a beast and, uh, it's very capable of making great images. So thank you guys, man, for tuning in to another King James video. I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, Minolta Gang. Whew.